Former NFL wide receiver Josh Bellamy was charged with bank fraud, wire fraud, and conspiracy to commit a crime in late 2020. Specifically, he ran a scheme to defraud the government. How did such a successful person, a former NFL wide receiver, get to this point? What led the former New York Jet to defraud the government out of over a million dollars? Josh Bellamy was born May 18, 1989, in St. Petersburg, Florida the same state where he would commit fraud 31 years later. Since Florida is a football-loving state, Bellamy grew up playing the sport through his early school years. After high school, Bellamy played at a JUCO college before transferring to a Division I powerhouse, Louisville University, in 2010. Bellamy shined at Louisville, but wasn't bright enough to get drafted in his second year. In 2012, after accumulating a decent stat line of 53 receptions and 683 receiving yards through two seasons, Bellamy signed as a free agent with the Kansas City Chiefs. All in all, Bellamy earned $7.6 million while playing in the NFL fell from 2012 to 2020. In those eight years, Bellamy played with five different teams, ending on a one-year stint with the New York Jets, which was cut short by a stubborn shoulder injury. The injury led Bellamy to skip training during the offseason. Given that he had nothing to do and no money coming, Bellamy stayed in Florida as the pandemic raged through the nation, where he began discussing business with a local entrepreneur named Philip Augustin. Augustin was in the talent agency business. However, the money-making idea Augustin proposed to Bellamy had nothing to do with talent representation. Instead, it had everything to do with the pandemic. At the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, the government created the Payment Protection Program, also known as the PPP. The program began as an effort to ensure average employees receive their regular paychecks. Businesses could apply for a PPP loan if they could prove the shutdowns impacted their income. PPP was designed to help businesses who genuinely needed help paying their employees while the lockdown halted income. However, Augustin decided to use the loan for a different purpose. He used it to make a profit. The legitimate business owner drafted some not-so-legitimate payroll documents and received far more in PPP loan money than he should have based on his agency's real numbers. Bellamy apparently thought the idea sounded like a good one. He enlisted Augustin to help him pull the same scheme using his company, Drip Entertainment, to apply for the loan. Authorities believe that Bellamy did not personally file the falsified documents. Augustin did. Augustin, who was 51 at the time, inflated the potential of his loan by fabricating bank statements and payroll tax forms. The false numbers led government officials to think Bellamy's company was much larger than it really was, leading to a loan size that fits the financial needs of his imaginary employees. It seemed like a neat trick, a neat trick that was incredibly illegal. Nevertheless, Augustin successfully inflated Bellamy's PPP loan. In fact, According to the SBA, or the Small Business Administration, Bellamy's Miami-based Drip Entertainment claimed to have 47 employees on their payroll. Authorities also found that Drip Entertainment had filed to reinstate their LLC status on Wednesday, the day of Bellamy's arrest. An LLC only files for reinstatement when they are either struggling to produce annual reports or after long periods of inactivity, an action a company with 47 employees would not likely take. Bellamy received about $1.2 million in fraudulent PPP loans in 2020. Between Bellamy's scheme and his other fraudulent plots, Augustine netted $24 million in PPP money. So, what did Bellamy do with all his newfound cash? Bellamy was kind enough to answer that question for all of us, including the authorities, through social media. According to Bellamy's purchase records, he spent $5,000 at the Gucci store, then dropped another thousand at Milano Exchange and nearly doubled that amount at Dior. But that was just the close. Bellamy allegedly spent $62,000 at the Seminole-owned Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Florida. As for the jewelry, Bellamy spent more money on diamonds than he did at the casino and fashion stores combined. Altogether, Bellamy spent $94,000 at the jewelry store, and he was not very subtle about showing off his new purchases. One tweet in particular seems to encapsulate the vibe Bellamy wanted to portray after obtaining his PPP loan. The tweet read, Spent so much in Dior, they want a CID. Captioning a photo depicting Bellamy sitting on an outdoor patio with a bundle of cash in his hand. Another tweet read, Mama said, where you going with all that jewelry on? Bellamy also created several Instagram posts that depicted him wearing designer clothes and expensive-looking jewelry. The tweets, along with the Instagram posts, were not just for showing off. Bellamy used the valuable items to market his brand, Drip Entertainment. 
through Drip, both figuratively and literally. Bellamy released a rap album called Forever Drippin' in 2020. The album cover featured Bellamy sitting on the front hood of a G-Wagon, tricked out in designer clothes, glistening watches, and gold chains. However, contrary to the name, the drip would not last forever. Eventually, the feds caught up with the scheme. Augustin, who forged the documents, was too lazy to write new ones for the next loan application. He used Bellamy's original documents and basically copy-pasted them onto his other clients' forms. Authorities had an easy time performing basic pattern recognition and noticed something odd about these particular PPP applications from South Florida. So they launched an undercover operation trying to find information that would help them nab the suspects involved. One of the suspects they focused on was Bellamy. To gather information, an agent called Bellamy posing as a business associate and started asking the out-of-work football player questions about his PPP loan and what he did with all the money. He said he could help Bellamy have his first loan forgiven and even secure a second one for him. In a complaint filed by the feds, the agent recorded Bellamy's responses. When the agent asked Bellamy about what he spent his money on, he said he wired, withdrew, and bought stuff for the artist who worked for him. Specifically, Bellamy said the funds he allocated to his artist went to financing music videos. Bellamy, an apparent oversharer, continued to tell the federal agent all about how he had been referring the strategy to his loved ones, including his girlfriend, his brother, and even his mom. After obtaining text messages with similar information, the federal investigators were ready to file their charges. They had plenty of evidence. They detained Bellamy in September of 2020 and scheduled him for a hearing in a Tampa federal court. While Bellamy was released, his wallet took a huge hit in the form of a quarter million dollar bond. But before Bellamy was released, the media pounced on the story, making Bellamy into an instant scapegoat for the scheme, despite being only a small facet of the overall crime. With headlines such as, Former Jets player Joshua Bellamy charged in 24 million PPP fraud scheme. A casual reader could be misled to believe Bellamy is responsible for the entire scheme when, in reality, Augustin was the true mastermind. Bellamy may look like your typical dumb criminal. However, the truth behind his participation in the scheme isn't as cut and dry as his reckless tweets make it appear. Bellamy's attorney is defending his client, saying he was just as much a victim of Augustin's scam as the United States government. After helping Bellamy leverage Drip Entertainment, Augustin began offering his services to other business owners he knew. He became someone they believed could safely get them money during the chaotic times of 2020. The chaos made many otherwise law-abiding people believe they could get away with defrauding the federal government. Augustin's scheme spread to other individuals living in South Florida and even as far north as Ohio. Though it's unclear how involved Bellamy was in perpetuating the scheme, Augustin's forging method was repeated enough times to defraud the government out of $24 million. What started out as a $900,000 PPP loan scam in the spring compounded to a multi-million dollar scheme by fall. Thanks to the FBI's intensive undercover work, Augustin was also detained and subsequently charged with bank and wire fraud. He is also being charged with obstruction of justice, in addition to conspiracy to commit more fraud, thus bringing an end to his $24 million scheme. The day before his arrest, Bellamy was waived from the Jets. In other words, he'll remain a former wide receiver until he signs with another team. Since Bellamy is currently charged with multiple counts of fraud, signing with any NFL team is not viable until his case is resolved. Bellamy's case will be prosecuted in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where the former NFL player will have to defend his fraudulent actions in front of a judge and jury. Diego Weiner, Bellamy's attorney, has a defense already lined up. In the past, professional athletes have been taken advantage of by crooked individuals many times. Professional athletes are typically young men with minimal experience in money management and thus susceptible to scams. ESPN even made a 30 for 30 documentary called Broke, which tells the story of several professional football players struggling with the daunting task of becoming an overnight millionaire. Under these pretenses, Diego will ask the courts to give Bellamy the benefit of the doubt. It is certainly possible that Bellamy did not know exactly how illegal the scheme was when he allegedly tried convincing his family to try it out. But even if Bellamy does walk free, what will he do now that his career is stalled? Will he ever play football again? Given Bellamy's shoulder injury, his age, and the fact he will spend the next several months in court, 
make the former wide receiver's return to the field highly unlikely. If his shoulder heals and he gets no prison time, Bellamy might be able to land a deal in the Canadian Football League, but his time there will most likely be short-lived. Statistically, the average NFL wide receiver peaks in his mid-20s and then steadily declines every year after 27. Bellamy is 31. Besides being a tragic story, Bellamy's misfortunes and poor decisions show how the PPP loan, a financial device with good intentions, can be twisted into something criminal. PPP loans were available from March of 2020 to May of 2021. In that time, it's estimated that $4.6 billion was obtained fraudulently. That number can grow through 2022 and 2023 as the FBI and government uncover more fraudulent PPP applications. And here's a quick update on Bellamy that happened after we finished producing this video. Bellamy was sentenced to three years and one month in federal prison on December 9th for his role in the COVID scam. He also has to forfeit a little more than $1.2 million and pay the same amount in restitution. Click here to watch one of these next videos and let us know in the comment section who you think is the best wide receiver in the NFL right now.